You are... Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Great. Do you know Dorothy Crane? Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses. But I especially abhor that nurse crane you mentioned. Why? Why don't you like nurses? What is wrong with you? <laughs> so you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. Oh my god. It's obvious only they have a necessary moral fiber. Right, because the sight of a naked man, oh my god. Why hate Nurse Crane? Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. For shame. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. I want to eat you already. You're, you're not endearing me to you at all. Your life in London? How am I more lost than you thought? What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. I only believe in facts. I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. What do you all quite a Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of a decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. You mean that? Because you know. That would freak me out. I have heard enough. Goodbye. Uh, no. I still need to talk to you. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. What? Well, what the... What's your plan? Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. What do you mean, exactly? Tell me, Tobias. What exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. Uh, Where do you put the limit? Purification by fire has proved useful. But where do you stop? Burn the clothes? The buildings? The corpses? Worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad. And dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small-time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son. If you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool? Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. Okay. Do 
you have any family left? Where'd that come from? Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Where did you send him? Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery, where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. You sent him on a preaching crusade? You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. There's more to his story, and I don't know that we uncovered it or if we uncover it later. I think we uncover it later, so I'm not going to get into that. I don't know where I'm going. There was someone we needed to talk to. Oh, no! Okay, this is the. Oh, okay. Hmm, let's check the front, because the guy we were looking for was up here the other day. I mean, a few minutes ago. But he walked up to the door and he left. Oh, he's still here. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me, since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Hmm? Your investigation in London. Why are, what are you doing here after sunset? What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. You risk your life? So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Is the public interested? That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Hmm. No newspapers talk about the epidemic? Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. Mm. It's criminal. If no one stops it, this epidemic could turn into a scourge. It may kill more people than the war itself. Yes, this is another kind of war, but just as deadly. History will judge us all for what we did and what we did not. I wonder if the newspapers not reporting it is like a cover for how this story exists, like the Spanish influenza outbreak that we're covering now is fictional, or if the outbreak that happens in the course of this video game is real and the newspapers didn't report it then. I'll have to look that up. So you're not afraid of going out at night? Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I must confess, some of my rational views have been shaken by recent events. I'll remember to stay away from the district's roughest streets then. Acquired. About an underground medical dispensary. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are wary of strangers and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? Mm. 
I'm afraid one of the nurses from the Pembroke Hospital may be involved with unsavory activities. Ah, could it be Dorothy Crane? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. No relatives? He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. So we will be going back there. How are you doing? You have fatigue. He never goes out? He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. So... okay. I think he faked that? Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Hmm. Let's see if we can find Joe's out here. I keep looking at that, but it's not a... Do I need you to do something for me? Can you do it? I'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I hear you yelling. Yeah, I saw that. Ah, oh, shit. Stuck. Where am I? That sucked. Gee, a gun would be useful right about now. Shit. takes us yeah we can't even I don't even think we can get this way yeah that's not that's not a door hey more stalls trash can with a lid on it yes sir okay yep you're in there but I want to see what's behind here before we Thought maybe that would be a hideout, but it's not. Gonna take this. Can't go that way. Okay. This would be a great spot for a hideout. Looks like nobody's back here. Excuse me, sir. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Um, I'm looking for Dorothy Crane. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, 
a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. Ugh, okay. How are you doing? You have a cold. About Darius Petrescu. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Ah. <laughs> so much anti-communism, jeez. Um, what are you doing here at night? May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. You're not afraid of the epidemic? But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. Well, you should avoid exposure still. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. Your life could be in danger. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. It's still risky around here. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. Hmm. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. Wow, okay. Who will help you if you're in danger? If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear Doctor. Yeah, I, I, that won't, I won't be around here all the time. Uh, what are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Hmm... Yeah. Peaceful. That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? I mean, people are dying, so I wouldn't call that peaceful. I can understand. Stand it a little bit, but I still wouldn't call it peaceful. Why seek inspiration here? Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Don't think it's a little morbid? Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir, Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Are you afraid to find the truth about her? Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah. Uh, Will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? You don't know her. And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? Hmm. Do you have examples? In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight. 
the barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about. And that's what Whitechapel is made of. I thought I unlocked a hint, but maybe I didn't. I'll leave you alone, sir. Okay. There's something around here. Oh, Camellia. The silent Editor refusal letter. Oh. I don't need that. I want the letter I just picked up. Sycophant Publishing, Lavender Court, Camden Street, London. Dear Mr. Nithercott, thank you for sending your book of poems. Songs from the Defeated City, which we found as interesting and profound as we told you the first time we received it. Alas, in the terrible times our country is currently facing, you must understand that such a title would be totally inappropriate for any publication. Thus, since you still refuse to change your title and demand the full publication or none of your work, I'm sorry to announce you that Sycophant Publishing chooses the second option. Kindest regards, A.G. Morris. You made flesh, I tell you. Change the title, dude. Come on. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? Do you make a living from your writing? You don't really make a living from your scribblings, do you, Richard? No, sir, I don't. I work so hard. I put all my time, my energy, my devotion into the precise carving of words. You don't seem to suffer from poverty. Actually, let's do this one. A rich artist is rare. When she was younger, my mother was a painter and a poet. She told me many times how poor her artist friends were and how she helped them. My parents pay for my rent, my food, and my clothes. All I have to give them in return is lies they do not believe. You seem embarrassed. Someday I hope to proudly offer my first publication to my parents. Until that day, I'll remain the failure of a son they have to support. I know, like, us writers are a proud bunch, but you really should. Just, just change the title. I know it's hard, but you can do it. I'll leave you alone, sir. And it sounded like there were a couple poems they didn't want published as well. He could also wait and, you know, if, the epi if he survives the epidemic, um, he might be able to get away with not changing the title, but they still might want to cut some of his poems. Were we back in here? Oh yeah. Here's a flower. A small flower bouquet with a voucher for a free medical checkup hidden between the flowers. She's leaving them at the doorsteps. Is this the door I need to unlock? Okay, we don't want to go that way. Just opening the door, just in case. Dearest Pettiscrew's letter. My dearest, most beloved children, I'm so sorry you've not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, my children, are still living in a country consumed by war, but there is also a war going on here in England, a war against poverty and against injustice. This is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years, which is why I'm writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now. 
and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must make now to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me and remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Pettiscrew. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Yes. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Where'd Camilla go, though? I thought I saw her. How did you get behind me? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm. True. Yeah. You certainly look like you mean her no harm. Oh, you're healthy. You work for Nurse Crane. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Nothing. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have Yeah, so her mesmerized level is freaking five, which I think is the highest we've seen. Tell me about Richard Nethercott. Tell me about Richard Nethercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. I know you can understand me. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Hmm. Very well. Goodbye then. That is all we will ever get from her. Her story is not revealed, even if you, um, even if you embrace her and hear her last thoughts, you don't get much. Who am I looking for? I know who I'm looking for. That. Okay, that's the way we came. Good to know. I thought I saw a trash can. That's you. We talked to you. Yeah. Is that? No, that's just light. Great. Okay. You! I was looking for you! Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick. Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. You are also fatigued. So much fatigue going around in this place. Looking for Dorothy Crane. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Um... How's your health? Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed. Or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. I understand that. Your line of work has many health risks. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. What about your client's health? You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? 
If you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Clayton Darby. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Why the skepticism? Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? You're speaking from experience? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Oh, I don't have any hints for her. Christina, have you been I, I don't. I, okay. Can you tell me about yourself? Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. Well... I don't judge you. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. And I will find you some medicine. Joe, can you go somewhere for me? <laughs> I'd appreciate it. <laughs> She's gonna stand there for a while. He's gonna ran up there. Pay me a glass and I'll be gentle. Pay me a bottle and I'll be gentle. Nobody's gonna move anywhere. Okay. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna go knock on this door. 